Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in and joining us here once again today. On today's video, Melissa and I are gonna be talking to you about the 10 things we have cut out of our lives or uh, reduced in our lives to help us save and bank a little more money in uh, our day-to-day -day routine. Yeah, a lot of times people ask us, how are you able to stay home? How are you able to have a family of six on a single income and still manage to save all of this money? So it really comes down to, uh, it's not really the amount of money that you're bringing in, it's the amount of money that is going out. So we're gonna talk about 10 things that we personally cut out of our lives about probably 10 years ago, and how you could maybe apply some of these to your own life to start working towards your financial goals as well. Cue the music. that we recommend is sitting down together as a couple and talking about what your goals are, what you want to achieve, and when you want to achieve it. If you're not on the same page, this is not going to work. You can't have one spender and one saver. And a lot of people in marriages say, oh, I'm the spender and I'm the saver. You both have to be the saver in order for this to work. Yeah, it's an important conversation to have and you need to make sure that you and your partner are both on the same page about things moving forward. Yes. Okay, so all that being said, let's dive into this list. Item number one is going out to eat. And that includes fast food. Speak on it, yep. Yeah, so I hear all the time from women, I just went to the grocery store, I spent $150 and I picked up $25 worth of pizza on the way home because I didn't feel like cooking. So there's a lot of people that don't feel like cooking. I think a lot of the problem with that is just staleness of the meals. And I'm guilty of it too. I've got like my fab five and then we just rotate them. Like Taco Tuesday. Yeah, but I rarely make them on Taco <laughs> Tuesday. It's like Taco Wednesday, Spaghetti Monday. So anyway, it gets stale, you get bored, you get sick of your own cooking, and so it's like, let's just go out to eat. So let's say once a week you say, let's just go out to eat. The average restaurant meal for two people with drinks and your food is about $50 after tip and tax. Now, if you did that one day a week as a couple, just two people, you're spending $2,500 a year. If you're a family of four and let's say you go out to eat on Friday night or Saturday or you just randomly go out to eat one day a week, four times a month, that's it. And you're spending $100, that is $5,000 a year because you didn't feel like cooking. Yeah, and for me, I obviously go out, I leave the house every day and I go to work and almost everybody I work with, the overwhelming majority of folks that I work with will go out and buy their lunch during their work shift. I never do because fortunately enough, Melissa does a great job of taking care of me and packs me a sack lunch every day. It's home cooked meals, uh, far better for you, especially with all the food that we grow here. It's better for you. And it saves us a ton of money. When I see folks, you know, they're, they're working, you're making X amount of money per day. If you take into consideration the fact that you are now losing some of that money because you're buying lunch for yourself between whatever, seven and 20 bucks, depending on what you're buying. Yeah. It's, it becomes a lot of money over time when you add it up. Yeah, if you worked five days a week and you spent $9 per meal, and then you had your tip and your tax, uh, you're spending $2,500 a year just on lunch. So, and that's pretty average when you go out, even a fast food meal is, can be like $7 now. Mm -hmm. yep. And you don't wanna eat fast food every day anyway. So he brings leftovers for dinner. I just make a little bit extra. It costs probably a dollar or two to add just a little bit more to dinner. And a lot, I hear, I, my husband doesn't like leftovers. Well, does he like dead? Another really easy way to spend money when you have your kids with you is, mom, I'm hungry, I just need a snack. Have snacks in your purse. I always have fishy crackers, granola bars, something. Because if you can just, I mean, a box of granola bars, if you get it on coupon like I do, you can throw everyone a granola bar and it's like a dollar, dollar fifty. If you stop at McDonald's or something and everyone wants Happy Meals or whatever or even if you're at the store and everyone's picking out two or three dollar snacks That's gonna add up really fast and kids want to eat all the time as soon as you leave the house They're starving so carry snacks put them in your car put them in your diaper bag put them in your purse You're gonna save a lot of money doing that fanny pack Keep them in your fanny pack. Yeah dads put them in your fanny pack women love a man that wears a fanny pack Okay item number two Buying coffee. We don't buy coffee. So you can make an entire pot of coffee for about a dollar 
And if you go out and you buy coffee, let's just say you're getting a drip coffee from Starbucks, it's about $3, you got a tip, there's tax, all of that. That's $1,100 a year if you buy it five days a week. Now, a lot of people are really guilty of pulling up to that latte line or walking into that Starbucks every single day that they work and sometimes on the way home from work and the average drink is about $5. You're spending $2,200 a year on coffee. I love coffee. I drink 40 ounces of coffee a day. At least I have a 40 ounce mug and it's drip coffee. If I were to take the equivalent of that and buy it from a, a store um, or a coffee place like Starbucks, even though I try to avoid Starbucks, it would be a lot of moolah. No. Think about the markup on a cup of coffee. A cup of coffee doesn't cost that much money to make. It really doesn't. It costs about a dollar. I, or I mean, sorry, about a dime. I made uh, lattes for years out of one of those little latte stands and it was about a dime a drink. And people, people are perfectly happy to pay that markup and sip on their little coffee because they are either um, just too lazy to make their own or because they're just stuck in it's this routine. daily routine. routine and habit of... Mm -hmm forking over five, six, seven dollars for their and they daily feel like, Yeah, they feel like I go to work, I deserve this. What you deserve is peace of mind and not living in debt and having the money that you're working for go towards your lifestyle and not just a cup of coffee. That's what you really deserve. So really think about that. Starbucks daily makes $61 million a day, just Starbucks. And then there's Tully, Seattle's Best, Dutch Brothers, name all the other little stands. So just Starbucks, $61 million a day. America, we're spending too much on coffee. One third of Americans spend more on coffee than they put into savings. Think about that. Number three, and this is an easy one for me, spending money to buy new clothing. Yeah, I think that's an easy one for most men. Your average man spends about $150 a month on clothing, which- I don't know if I spend that in a year. For yeah, myself. probably not. But I think it's the women that are actually probably spending that. Women, huh? this is our issue. We're the ones guilty of this. One hundred and fifty to four hundred and fifty dollars a month on clothing, especially single young women. They're really guilty of that. If you spend right around in the middle of that, by the time you're fifty-five, that's a hundred thousand dollars on clothes that you probably don't even own anymore, or don't even remember, or you look back and shudder that you actually purchased those things. Yeah, we were just watching some old family movies uh, from <laughs> like 10 years ago and I still wear a lot of the same clothes that I did 10 years ago. In fact, if you go through my drawers, a lot of the clothing items that you'll find are, are from high school even. I'm 36 years old to give you an idea of how long I'm willing to hold out on purchasing new clothing. Right. So sometimes you'll see us in like some of these brand things, but this was like a sponsorship from this company. Tammy Flowers hand made me this hat. Isn't it beautiful? She made them for our whole family. This t-shirt was a gift. Yep. Um, another thing is moms are really guilty of spending a lot of money on their kids' clothing. So the average back to school spending for each child is $688. That was the 2019 stat. $688. I don't spend that in curriculum. You're spending money that you don't have to impress people that you probably don't even like. We're spending way too much on clothing, America. So the way that we've really curved that and almost took, taken our clothing budget down to nothing is shopping secondhand. Now that doesn't mean that you necessarily have to go to Goodwill and places like that, but if you can find some of those- Although we do. We do, but some of those small consignment shops are amazing because they also buy your stuff. So I found a consignment store that will pay me 50%. And so I can sign it there, she sells it, she gets half, I get half. And then I get that credit towards buying new items in her store. On average, the consignment stuff goes for about 10% of what it would sell for in the store. So it's been a really, it's almost like clothes, clothes borrowing. I buy it, the kids wear it, I can sign it back, I take my credit and I buy them their yeah, next It's a running so. balance on new clothing. Yep. Or what is new to us clothing. Yeah. And, and speaking of Value Village and, and Goodwill and places like that, um, where it's like secondary market type clothing, I think there's a tremendous amount of uh, insecurity and pride that gets in the way of most people going into a, an establishment like that and actually purchasing their clothing. Yeah. For us, we gladly do it. Not only do we go to places like that because one, you can find great deals, but they also offer up uh, periodic sales to where you can get really off. nice quality mm -hmm. clothing items for dollars, Yeah. Like a few bucks. Yeah, Value Village has color days where, so they have um, yellow tags, green tags, red tags, and then every day of the week, one color is half off. So you can go in there and anything with a green tag is half off. 
So you just go and you just look at green tags and you can end up getting twice as much. It's already cheap. And here's a little secret. If you can find a secondhand store like a Value Village or a big name store where it's a tax write-off to donate to them, close to a mall, the mall actually donates their stuff. So we started shopping at the one next to the mall and we were getting Carhartt and um, North Face and all kinds of brands like that with tags still on them Brand new clothing. for 90% off. Yep. Number four on our list is family vacations or just vacations in general. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, ways that you don't have to go, like you don't have to get on an airplane and pay for lodging and food and all these things to go and give your children good experiences. Yeah, but I guess my point is that you try to give your kids all these experiences and a lot of times they just don't even need that and they'll have just as much fun going camping or hiking or on a staycation to the beach or um, a road trip. A road trip. We went on an epic road trip and of course we turned it into a history lesson, but we went through Yellowstone and Cody, Wyoming and we were gone for 10 days. It was amazing. And we just drove and we bought food at Walmart and we made sandwiches in the car and it was great. That yeah, was a lot of fun. Yeah. So the average American family spends about $4,800 per vacation and they average two vacations a year, which to me is kind of incredible. I didn't realize it was that much. You guys really go on two vacations a year. We're going one about every couple of years. So if you go on that. two vacations a year, the average is that you're spending about 10% of your total salary on vacations that you come back from, and that's it. Okay, number five on our list is a seemingly small thing, but it actually ends up making a big difference for us budget-wise, and this is something that I've become very passionate about because at one point in time, I was an addict of using these things, but it's paper towels and paper products. Yeah, just paper towels. People just think that they need them. And so let's say you buy two rolls of paper towels a week, which is probably pretty average. You're spending $200 a year on paper towels that you're just throwing away. In like the you, trash. You might, would you take $200 and wipe up a spill with it? No, you would not. You can get a four pack of pretty nice, like mainstay brand Walmart dish towels, and they cost $4.87 at Walmart. Get some washable dish towels and stop using paper towels. You don't need them. We haven't brought a roll of paper towels in this house in 10 years. Okay, number six is another one of those items that a lot of people buy on a pretty consistent basis and don't really give a lot of whole, a whole lot of thought to, and that's bottled water. Yeah, bottled water. Um, so I read this whole study that in 1975, the average American drank about 1.5 gallons of bottled bot water per year. Which, purchased water, so, yeah. Yeah, so just, barely any. Now it's like, gosh, what did I write that? It is 39 gallons of bottled water a year. The average American is spending $100 on water in a plastic bottle. You can get like a Brita filter. Um, for us here, we have a filtration system that comes along with our well water. So we get really good, high quality water. Um, I got a BPA free one gallon jug that I carry with me every day. People see me walking around with it and that's what I, I drink when I'm thirsty. Right, so just plan ahead. It's all about planning ahead. You don't want to spend $100 a year purchasing bottled water. That's insanity. And it goes deeper than water. I mean, you think about things like uh, energy drinks. So there's people that I talk to that are struggling with money and then I see them standing there holding a $3 energy drink that mm -hmm. is not only poison to their body, but it's poison to their finances. Those things are expensive. Do not walk into a gas station. If you're pumping gas, get back in your car. Don't you go in that gas station. You don't need anything in there. Yeah, it's kind of like this, you know, the coffee. We were talking about that a second ago. It's just something that people do out of habit oftentimes. And like Melissa said, not only is it not good for you, but it ends up costing you a ton of money over time. Number seven on our list of things is haircuts. Haircuts is something I'm, I'm kind of passionate about. I actually cut my own hair. I cut the hair on both of my sons and then when Melissa needs an occasional trim, she'll call me into the bathroom and I'll take out the, uh, the scissors and I'll take care of that for her. Yeah, I don't think that we've been into the salon. I don't think I've been to the salon since maybe my wedding day and that was also a gift. So. so how I ended up cutting my own hair was that I got sick and tired of spending $20 to go in every two to three weeks to get my hair cut and then I would walk away from it not liking the haircut that I ended up with. So alternatively, I ended up investing about $150 in some quality hair cutting products. Taught myself how to cut hair over time watching a bunch of YouTube videos and just learning from others practicing on my kids and myself and over time just got better and happier with the end result. It's worth it. It's a worthwhile investment. And once again, you'll save yourself a ton of money. Yeah, especially if you have kids. So kids haircuts are pretty expensive. So let's say you're spending about $20 for the average haircut. 
per boy, if you're doing it just once a month, for a man in your family or a little boy in your family, that's $300 a year. Women's haircuts tend to be a little bit more. They're about $40, but they don't get it as often. So let's say we go every two months, it's still $300 a year. Now, if you're one of those fancy pantsy girls and you're spending $150 to go get your hair foiled and cut and all that, and it's $150, even if you only go four times a year, that's $600, ladies. $600. You know what men find really attractive? $600. So I know you're going to say it to this next one. How is it that you managed to stay so fit <laughs> and healthy? Sexy. Sexy. Gym memberships. We don't go to the gym. We cut it out a long, long time ago, even though that's where we originally met back when we and were where we met. 20 years old, 21 years old. And when, before we knew how to save money. We no longer have gym memberships. No. Go ahead. Talk about why. Yes, so let's say that you don't spend anything extra. You just go to the gym and you have a $30 membership. You're spending... A lot of money. Almost, uh, just under $400 a year just on your gym membership. Yeah, and the right. argument is that... Yeah, 360 bucks a year, yeah, right? Yeah, $360 so yeah. a year. So, but that's not really all that people spend. So people 18 to 65, when they started adding up what they spend on gym memberships, Classes, personal training, equipment, their shoes, their clothing, and their supplements. Because supplements are really expensive. Like you start buying protein or creatine, things like that. It was like $150 a month on average. Yeah, it's a lot of money. And these places are like any other business. They're just designed to make money. Especially when a lot of places, like I remember 24 Hour Fitness when I was uh, working out there. I got in on a deal, but they, they had a sign-up fee and all these additional fees that came along with having a gym membership. It's just not worth it. Right. You can buy your own set of weights and have, a, you know, this, you can have a sense of self-discipline, go out, run, work out, do push-ups, sit-ups, squats, the whole deal. I do work out. I enjoy working out. Fortunately yeah. for me, I have access to a free gym um, where I work, so I take advantage of that as often as possible. But you don't need a gym membership. No, but when you walk into a gym, they are going to try to convince you that you are investing in yourself and you are not, you are investing in their business model. But they're gonna convince you that you are doing this for you and you're gonna be healthier in the new year and all of that. So with the new year coming, don't fall for that scam. You don't need that. What you need is self-discipline and enough self-respect to want to be healthy and feel good about yourself. So you can do that at home. You can do it and save the money. Yep. So this may be my favorite item on the list and that's Cutting out your cable bill. Cut the cord. Don't need it. Get rid of it. It's a lot of money. You're better off in the end because you have far more time to spend doing things that are worthwhile. Yeah, we cut the cord about seven years ago and we were spending about $150 a month. And I think that there's some programs where cable's gotten a little cheaper. Like I always spend $100 a month on my cable and I'm entertained. You're spending $1,200 a year to sit there and stare at a box. It makes you unhealthy. It wastes your time. Snip it, save that $1,200, put it into savings. There are also so many alternatives nowadays. Obviously, you have the internet, mm -hmm. you have YouTube, you yeah, have YouTube. things like the Amazon Fire Stick, Roku Box. Look it up, do your research. There are a ton of alternatives that are actually cheaper than a cable bill. But kind of like we mentioned a second ago, maybe just cut back on your video content consumption. Except for for good, simple living. You're going to want to <laughs> make sure that you're subscribed and you hit that bell so you don't miss a single video and we will entertain you for free. Don't get me wrong. I watch a lot of YouTube, but that's free and cheaper. Well, not free, but cheaper than, than having cable and going through the 500 channels of crap. And you're learning things. You. YouTube, you can seek out anything you want on YouTube for free and you're, you can learn how to do anything. It's just a wealth of knowledge if you use it correctly. Right. The last item we have on our list of things that have helped us save money and work toward our financial goals is the overbooking of kids and children's activities. This is a hard subject for parents because we're kind of told in society that we need to give all our children all of these experiences. As a child of the 80s, my mother and father were not seeking out experiences for us and we are okay. So the average American family, <laughs> we're okay. Mostly okay. The average American family just on going out to movies, going bowling, going to the arcades, going indoor skydiving, uh, rock climbing. There's so many indoor things to do now. They're spending about $2,500 a year on experiences. 
So it's okay for birthday parties and things like that, but every single weekend, you don't need to go out and have a unique, expensive experience with your children. You can just spend time with your children. Children love family game night. Children love watching home movies. Love it. So find activities that you can do that cost nothing. Yeah, and I feel like it's a little disingenuous too. You know, we, we spend all this money and try to keep our kids busy with, with activities rather than maybe just taking a second to slow down and, and have a meal with them or just have these important conversations or even just non-important conversations, just spending time with them. Yeah, and I hear the argument too is when my kids are bored on the weekend or my kids are really bored for spring break, it's okay to be bored. Boredom breeds creativity. Let your kids be bored. I've said this before. You want your kids to be a little bored because it it forces them to use their brains and it forces them to interact with you and one another and even if it's arguing with their siblings that's okay that's part of being a child you don't need to book them book them book them book them book them it makes them tired it makes them cranky they're entertained while they're there and as soon as you're driving home they're bored you can't entertain a kid 24 7 and you're going to waste a lot of money trying so let's throw some actual stats at you to support the point that we're trying to make yeah, sports is a big one. 45 million American children are in sports every single year. 80% of those kids no longer have any interest in the sport that they played as a child by the age of 15. So you have to really think about the time and the money that you're investing into sports and whether or not it's going to come out to be anything. A worthwhile investment. Yeah, yeah. so we always say when you're doing something, do it with purpose, do it with a cause, do it with some kind of end goal, not just because they're bored. Yeah, youth sports has become a giant industry. You know, back when I was a kid, 80s and 90s, I actually played soccer as a child all the way up until college when I got a, I got a college soccer, uh, soccer scholarship. Um, but back when I was playing select soccer and I was doing the Olympic development program, all that kind of stuff, there was no massive expense to come along with that. Granted, it, it did become a time commitment, but there was no huge travel expense. You didn't, it wasn't mandatory that you go to all these camps that they have nowadays. Not everybody had matching gear and matching cleats that was all uh, personalized. Um, so things have changed over time, evolved, and not only is it a huge time commitment, it is also a huge monetary and financial commitment, especially on families like ours where it's a, you know, a single primary income and we have a total of six people in our family. Right, if you have multiple kids playing sports, like that's all they do. We know moms that have three kids playing soccer, league soccer, and it's literally all they do, they do nothing else but soccer. And I don't know that any of those kids are gonna grow up to be soccer players. And I don't even think that they want to grow up to be soccer players. Communicate with your kids, find out what they're good at. You could spend years and years of your life, on average $2,300 a year per kid to play league sports, $2,300 per kid. And maybe they don't even really like soccer. So talk to your kids, find out what they're good at. If you're spending that so that they can get an eight, plays trophy, maybe soccer ain't their game. And that's okay. Every kid has talents, but you don't need to put them in everything. Well, this person's in eight different activities or, or they need to have a sport every single time of the year. It's okay to have a season of rest. Your kids need that. They don't need to go somewhere every day. They get up in the morning, they go to school, they have homework, they go to sports, they go to bed, they get up and they do it over again. And then Saturday, is games all day long. You're at siblings games, you're at your games, you're running, everyone's grumpy, everyone's yelling. You're going broke doing it. Stop it, stop it. If your kid isn't gonna be a football player or a soccer player, or that's not like their passion, you don't have to do it. It's okay to say no to overbooking your children. Yeah, now you're spending much money on something that's far more of a detriment than a benefit to your child and actually be able to cook dinner and not have to grab dinner on the road. So it all is kind of this snowball effect. Well, we're not home, so we have to stop by KFC or we have to stop by all these other awful places to eat, spend money that we don't have, gas money that we don't have, time that we don't have, and this whole divide and conquer of the American family is actually really sad. It's destroying the family unit. We need to come back together, we need to take control of our finances, take control of our family, and take control of our time. And a lot of that is learning to say no to things. So there you have it, guys. There are the 10 things that Melissa and I have cut out over the years to help us try to make some progress and work toward our personal financial goals. Maybe this isn't applicable for you. Uh, maybe it is. Uh, I think a lot of the things that we went over are things that people spend money on out of obligation or because it's become the societal norm. But if you do have a goal in mind, you have your own personal financial goals that you're working toward, 
chances are that it's probably going to take some sacrifices that are going to have to be made by not only you, but members of your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we've managed to do it on a single income and we've managed to do it on a single income for 12 years and it just required us breaking some really bad habits. So uh, again, a lot of people don't have an income problem. They have an outgoing problem. Spending problem. Yeah, way too much yeah. money going out. So you need to stop the bleeding and start developing new habits. Find out how much you are spending on these little things and then just start saying no to them and then you will be amazed how much money you're able to save. And speaking of saving money or getting something really cool, Keeping it, Dutch and I are both doing a really awesome giveaway. A couple days ago, we each released a video on uh, processing rabbits, actually. So if you go over to my video, you can win yourself a $200 Trayvax knife. Make sure you go over there and enter that giveaway. It's amazing. And then go over to Keeping It Dutch. If you don't already know who he is, he is such a cool guy. He's completely selfless. He doesn't need to reach out to all of us little guys, but he does, and he does it genuinely, and I think he really does care to to just help this whole YouTube community grow. He definitely knows his stuff when it comes to homesteading. Bees, goats, he raised sheep in the past, chickens, rabbits, I mean, you name it, Dutch is doing it. So go He's check out. He's a man, Dutch. Yeah, we really appreciate I'm very you. Very grateful for all the help you've given us, appreciate it. Yes, and Dutch is giving away a $50 Amazon gift card, which I know can come in handy, especially as you start switching around your habits. It's a really great way to uh, maybe get some Christmas gifts off your list that maybe you don't have money to do. So go over there, enter that $50 gift card, and we will see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Bye.